It's the festive season and pumpkins are in season and today I'm going to show you how to make a pumpkin macaroni and cheese. Yep, you heard it right, a pumpkin macaroni and cheese. Here I've got this beautiful butternut squash. I'm going to roast it in the oven and I'm going to show you how to make this delicious creamy recipe. I'm going to keep it quite simple. I'll just cut the pumpkin in half lengthwise. And with a spoon, just scoop out the seeds. Next, I'll roast them in the oven. Don't forget to drizzle with some olive oil. Season with salt and pepper and roast in an oven preheated at 200 degrees Celsius for about 30 to 40 minutes until the pumpkin flesh has softened. My butternut squash is ready. And I'm just going to scoop out the flesh and add it into my blender. and I'll top it up with some fresh milk and I'll blend these ingredients together as they will be the main component of my pumpkin macaroni and cheese. Okay, let's start cooking. All right, so this is the pot. I'll be cooking my sauce in. I've got some water that I'm boiling over here to cook my pasta. So I'll be preparing the sauce as I would a bechamel sauce. I start off with some butter, which I melt. Traditionally, when you make a basic bechamel sauce, you melt butter and then cook in the flour. But I wanna add some fragrant aromatic flavors. So here I've got some sage, which I'm just going to tear off the leaves and add it into my butter. And this will just infuse the flavors into the pasta dish and already it's smelling super. And I'll just remove the sage from the oil before I add in the flour. Just let the flavors develop in the meantime. And once the aromatic flavor comes out, this is about five to seven minutes after you gently fry them in the oil. It smells so good. I'll then add in my flour and just create a nice roux base. And just fry until it develops a nice golden brown color. You want to cook the flour until it develops a golden brown color. That ensures that the raw flavor of the flour is gone. Next, I'll add in my pumpkin and milk mixture. And just mix everything together until the sauce starts to thicken. Just look at the beautiful color that's developed. And this is just from the pumpkin. I haven't added any cheese yet. And I'm just gonna season my sauce with some nutmeg powder and season with salt and freshly ground black pepper. And just mix everything together. And then once the sauce starts to thicken, just turn off the heat and then add in your cheese. Now I'm adding a special twist. I'm adding some lebne into the sauce because I want a bit of that tartness to counterbalance the sweetness of the pumpkin. Next I'll add in my shredded cheddar and my shredded gouda. Make sure to add them in phases. You don't want to add them all in at the same time. Look at that cheesiness. A little bit more gouda because you just can never have enough cheese. It's macaroni and cheese in the end. All right. 
right, so now we're ready to add in our pasta. And I'm using elbow pasta, which I've cooked in salted water. You want to cook it al dente so that it has an opportunity to continue cooking inside. How awesome does that look? And that's it, our pasta is ready. Now you can either prepare it as a bake, but I'm just gonna serve it as it is with some nice breadcrumb topping. I've kept the base of my macaroni cheese simple, just a bit of the aromatic flavor from the sage and the beautiful flavor from the pumpkin, but the topping is where it's all going to be exciting. I'll start off by melting some butter. And for some flavoring, I'm adding some minced garlic. I may have been a bit too generous, but the smell is simply amazing. Add a bit of chili flakes. Now this is optional, but I recommend it. And then add in your breadcrumbs. You want it to fully be coated by the butter and just gently fry until it has a nice golden brown color. Turn off the heat and then add in your Parmesan cheese. I don't want the cheese to melt, but I just want it to just be well mixed. And then finally add in some finely chopped parsley. And we're done. To serve, I'm just going to plate it directly into my plate. And I'll finally top with my little breadcrumb mixture. And this is my favorite part. Mmm, mmm. Guys, this is amazing. You have to try it at home. And definitely don't forget to make the breadcrumb mixture because really that's just what takes this whole dish to another level.